He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. From the Holland family, the DeLorms, and the Peters family. Click, click. <laughs> Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. From Kinsley and Myrna. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter from, from the Falkenhol family. Hello and welcome to Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church. We are here. It's the second Sunday of Easter. I don't know about you, but have you ever had times where you wondered if up was down and down was up, and you're just wondering what's going to happen next, what's true, what's not? Well, welcome to the world of Thomas. He had witnessed his Lord and Savior crucified, was dead. And now he's hearing from first the women, then the other disciples, that Jesus is alive, but his eyes saw what his eyes saw. And for him, he was trapped in that idea of seeing is believing. And so my prayer for you uh, as we go through this time of being fed by the Lord, by his word, being reminded of his gifts, uh, if you have any sense of doubt, worry, wondering what is going to happen next, uh, I pray that you would be uplifted during this time as we are reminded of the peace that our Lord gives us a peace that surpasses all human understanding. Um, also, just so that you know, we have the electronic piano right here. This is our second take of this introduction, uh, because as I sat down to play the opening hymn, it suddenly uh, started doing all kinds of weird things. And so uh, you won't see me, but I am still with you. You'll hear uh, I'm going to play at our acoustic piano for our hymn to be today, as well as a piece of special music after the sermon. So our opening hymn today is O Sons and Daughters of the King. If you're looking for uh, the order of service, the words, the orders of service are on the church website, uh, is on the church website, but it's also pinned in the comments below. We're going to sing hymn 470, O Sons and Daughters of the King, verses 1 and 4 through 8, as we focus on Thomas's journey of doubt to faith this day.
divine service the first say. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Knowing that we all have the need for God's forgiveness, let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help save comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first reading, as will be the case for the season of Easter, instead of an Old Testament reading, will be a reading from the book of Acts, chapter 4, today, verses 32 through 35. The full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading, 1 John chapter 1 through chapter 2, verse 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testified to it, and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard of from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. 
But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we'll sing a cappella the common Alleluia verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our hymn of the day is hymn 472. These things did Thomas count as real.
Sunday of Easter teaches us. That's what we should take away from this day, which is also known as St. Thomas Sunday. That Christ's resurrection is real and it's effective. But Thomas had his doubts about this truth. He was stuck in his unbelief, his disbelief. As we heard Jesus say, do not disbelieve, but believe. Or more literally, be not disbelieving or unbelieving, but be believing. And it wasn't just doubt like, well, it's just too good to be true. Thomas didn't believe that Christ's resurrection is real, despite eyewitness testimony from his fellow believers, including the apostles. And because he didn't believe it was real, he certainly didn't believe that it had any effect, that there was any benefit to him not only in the future, you know, on that last day of the resurrection of the dead, or before that, like when we die and our souls are with our risen Lord in heaven, but even already there and then, or for us here and now. His statement was, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, place my finger into the mark of the nails, place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Of course, Thomas didn't need to confess with words his unbelief in Christ's resurrection. There was the fact that he wasn't with the other disciples on that first evening of the resurrection. That already shows some doubt and unbelief. I mean, he had heard the words of Jesus, those divine words, that divine promise we hear in Luke 18, see we are going up to Jerusalem and everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will be delivered over to the Gentiles and will be mocked and shamefully treated and spit upon and after flogging him they will kill him and on the third day he will rise. Or remember what's recorded in the Gospel of John. Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. I mean, even the Jewish leaders, the ones who crucified Jesus, they understood his claim that he would rise from death on the third day. That's the reason that they sealed the tomb. That's the reason that they posted guards there. No doubt Thomas had heard the report of Jesus' sunrise appearance to Mary and the other women. I mean, he should have gathered with the others, waited for the risen Lord. But the old saying, seeing is believing, was in style even back then. Or more to the point, not seeing equals not believing. And if we're honest, we understand Thomas's disbelieving problem. Because we have the same one, even if we don't like to admit it. Often it's difficult for us to believe that Christ's resurrection is real and that it has effect for us. Sometimes it seems and feels downright impossible because we have fears and anxieties like the disciples. We hide behind closed doors wondering what the future is going to bring to us and to our loved ones. 
mean, what do we see in the news every day? Rising death counts. Death itself staring us in the face all the time. Doesn't that seem to refute the Lord's resurrection and any effect that it might have? Can we be sure about anything right now? Whether it be jobs or retirement or health or life. Some of you have loved ones who are sick. Some have loved ones who have recently died. Pastor, don't these things contradict your gospel declaration that Christ's resurrection is real and that it's effective? In the midst of our present reality, at this or any time, it is incredibly difficult for us to believe in Christ's resurrection and its effectiveness for us. Let's face it, Thomas's words could be our own words, often are our own, even if we're not speaking them out loud, even if we don't even speak them silently. But how often do we feel unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, place my finger into the mark of the nails, place my hand into his side, I will never believe. goodness, with so much suffering and sickness and pandemic and death in the world, our weak flesh just feels sometimes like it cannot believe. Thomas isn't alone. Not back then and certainly not now. We're all doubting, disbelieving Thomases. And it's more than just weakness in us, it's the sin that's in us. Sin that plagues us. Sin that grabs hold of our thoughts. Sin that causes us to disbelieve. And we all struggle with Thomas's sin of doubt and unbelief regarding the things of God, not the least of which is Christ's resurrection. And if we have difficulty believing the resurrection, something that was seen and touched, something that was and is and ever shall be very real, well, what are we supposed to make of the things that we cannot see or touch? You know, like at the beginning of the service, the forgiveness of sins pronounced by your very merely human pastor. If we struggle with Christ's resurrection, we surely struggle with the words based on his death and resurrection. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Do you remember what the religious leader said to Jesus? Who can forgive sins but God alone? That's what they wondered when Jesus forgave the sins of the paralyzed man. And then Jesus healed him just to, to show the living proof of Jesus' divine inherent authority to heal and forgive sins. And so consider the gracious words of our risen Savior in today's gospel. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven then. In the midst of all of your doubts and disbeliefs, the risen Christ declares peace be with you. Have you denied God by your words or by your actions and then repented like Peter did? The resurrected Savior says to you, peace be with you. Have you betrayed Christ in your thoughts? Fled from God like the disciples on the night when he was betrayed? I mean, maybe your fleeing wasn't literal. Maybe it was just that freedom to sleep in on Sunday morning. You know, before this time of isolating. Choosing not to gather with the other believers like Thomas did that Sunday evening. Or more recently, instead of taking in the services online, you stayed away from the things of God thinking, ah, who's going to know? But now today in your isolation, you yearn for what you've neglected. You long for what you once took for granted. To you who in repentance now hunger and thirst for the resurrected Christ, 
the one who died on the cross, the one who has broken the chains of death, the one who has left the tomb forever empty. That risen and ever-living Lord declares to you again today, peace be with you. You hear your Savior's voice today as you shelter at home, behind closed doors for fear, kind of like the disciples. But you hear Christ's voice hidden in the voice of a man, your pastor, this preacher. Such a word would not be certain if based upon me, it only works because the risen Christ himself promises to work in and through those whom he sends. He said, as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And that promise, the gift of the holy ministry, the gift of your pastor, that gift of forgiveness distributed this way is for sure and certain and real. Because the Father and the Son graciously send, God the Holy Spirit is here at work through the office of the holy ministry. He works in the word and in the sacraments, applying to you the forgiveness of sins and the peace that Christ purchased by his death on the cross and then sealed by his glorious resurrection from the grave. Christ's resurrection is real and it is effective. Even in this world that's ravaged by sin and the effects of sin, even and especially when it might appear otherwise, like now in this pandemic, after all, what could be more real than the resurrection of the Son of God? Mary Magdalene and the other women, they saw and touched the risen Christ on that first Easter morning. The gathered disciples, minus Thomas, they witnessed the resurrected Jesus that Easter evening. And then the next week, unbelieving, Thomas received from the risen Savior the proofs that he had called for to bring him back to faith. And because of those proofs, he cries out, my Lord and my God. St. Paul even records that the risen Savior appeared to, to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of them still alive, when Paul wrote, meaning that Christ's resurrection is real and verifiable. It is beyond all doubt. And so what could be more effective than the peace of sins forgiven? The peace of having doubts removed, that peace of having unbelief turned to faith, and having death turned to everlasting life. What could be more effective than what Peter declares in his first letter? I'll read some selected verses for you. First chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed at the last time. Hear that he has caused you, dear Christians, to be born again, through the waters of holy baptism. And he continues, verse 6 and verses, uh, first he says, Though now for a little while you have been grieved by various trials. We're not the first time or place or people going through difficult times. But he encourages them to rejoice in the Lord's resurrection. And then he continues on, verses 8 and 9, he says, For by God's grace, though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And all of this is made possible only because Christ's resurrection is real, 
And it's, and if you were here with me right now, you'd all say, effective. Jesus is risen in the flesh. The wounds of his glorious work of salvation are still in his immortal body. He is both Lord and God. And in him, and him alone, you have peace with God. A peace that surpasses all human understanding. You have peace through the forgiveness of your sins, including those sins of doubt. You have salvation for your soul. And that is why we continue to say in this Easter season, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. We're going to continue now with a, a song that I first learned in my year of traveling with the crew. Uh, this is a song written by Joel Haberstock called Look at My Head. continue 
you now by professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we live in a world of darkness where many are plagued by shame, abuse, neglect, hatred. Shine your light into the dark corners of our hearts that we always walk in fellowship with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we live in a world of death where there are threats and disasters constantly around us, but you are the God of life. In the midst of all this death, bring the hope and comfort of Christ's resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, there are many who do not know the joy of your light and life, and many who refuse to believe the power of your resurrection unless they can see or experience something profound. Lead them to confess alongside Thomas, my Lord and my God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, send healing and care to all who are sick, injured, recovering. Strengthen them with your healing hand and bring them the joy of fellowship that we have in the communion of saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, there are many grieving, many who mourn the death of loved ones. Comfort them with the hope and the certainty of resurrection life, which is ours in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, at one time your church was united so that the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. Unite your church once again so that we enjoy fellowship rather than division. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. We continue praying the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and fill you with his almighty peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is 917. Savior again to thy dear name we raise.
Christmas.